Hey y'all, um, I hope y'all can hear me in this video clearly. Um, this is, I'm going to say, is take one. So first and foremost, let me just welcome you to the channel. If you're a returning subscriber, then you already know the drill. If you're a new subscriber, then thank you. And I appreciate you subscribing to the channel and I hope you enjoy the content. This is Gorgeously Real TV, and I am your host, Gorgeously Real. And the reason I say this is take one, because last time I used my headphones, and it seems like it didn't even, like, it sounded crazy, so I had to re redo the whole Nipsey Hustle video. And all of my videos, I do, like, just off the top of my head, so it's kind of hard when I have to do a take two to remember everything that I said on take one. So let's hope that take one goes through, okay? Because I have a lot of things to discuss. This video doesn't really have, um, it doesn't really have a certain title or a certain perspective. I'm going to be all over the place with this video. So just a heads up that I'm going to be all over the place. I'm going to try to keep you caught up if you don't understand anything that i'm saying in this video ask me i'll explain it to you in the comment section and definitely start commenting on the videos more because i want to hear what you guys got to say i like to hear you guys opinion and i like to you know kind of like a debate type thing like we can do that just do it respectfully all right respect i don't know i never used to be big on respect I'm kind of trying to get there maybe it's the whole age thing but anyway um i'm sorry that i haven't been making videos every day or every other day like i said i was gonna do my last video was about nipsey so that was around the time of his death so that was what march 31st and here we are and it's april the 15th 2019 all right so i've been just going through a lot i found out a lot about myself um the young lady the the egyptian goddess on this screensaver that you see is supposedly me okay um i got sent this this picture by someone on instagram um he found my account from youtube he found my instagram account or he found me through youtube and then he looked for my Instagram account and he said, you know, this is you. And I'm like, at first, I'm like, shut, what? Like, you know, like, okay, whatever. Thinking he's just trying to pull some type of game and date me or something. And he's like, no, I'm serious. Like, that's you. And what do you mean, that's me? Why would that be me? I'm me. So how is she me? You know what I'm saying? I didn't get it. And he's like explaining the whole reincarnation thing to me and how he sees my videos and what I go through with my health and with the hospitals. And he's like, that's you. And you're here to change things. And once you change things, you have to leave. And I don't like the word leave because leave means pass away, transition, go to the spirit realm. I won't be here with you guys anymore. And I'm nervous about that. But I've always known since a kid that I was here for a specific reason. I mean, we all have a purpose. We all have a mission. But we have those ones that are here for a specific, you know, you're here to specifically do this. And then you got to go. It's time for you to go. Got to transition. Um, Nipsey was a reincarnation. If you haven't seen that photo, let me see if I can find it. I think I have it. So I'm going to show you guys the um, side by side picture of me and her or whatever. Okay. Y'all see on pink Balenciagas? Nice, huh? One day. All right. So I was, this is the video. I mean, this is the picture of me and her side by side. I had to get a picture with me with red lipstick on it. And I sent it to that person and they blew it up. Like the picture is kind of larger. So that you can see my features and her features. I really do see the similarity. I see it. I definitely see it now that it's side by side. I see it. So if you see it, then you let me know in the comment section 
what you think about it. Do you think that that's possibly me or I'm possibly her? And it's really weird. I've asked her name. And supposedly her name is it's a K and an I. So I don't know if it's Key or a Kai or whatever. But my name is Kiara. Or like some people say it, which annoys me, Kiara. Like, oh, what the, what's a Kiara? That's not your name? Um, not really. So I don't know if it's Key or a Kai or whatever. But it spells a K and an I. So I don't know much about this reincarnation thing. But ever since he's told me about it, I've been learning a lot about how that happens and then with the whole nipsey hustle thing let me see if i still i better still have that picture um i do nipsey hustle and i believe it's i don't want to say it wrong selassie i'm just gonna say his last name selassie if i'm saying that wrong let me know i don't really you know i'm not trying to be too too what Whatever, you guys get what I'm saying. I'm not trying to be all proper about it. I don't really know of, I know of this man, but I don't know a lot about him. Aside that he was a emperor back in the day. Um, but obviously, on the right, you see Nipsey Hussle. And then on the left, you see Selassie. So, that definitely is a reincarnation. Look at the nose. The eyes are a little different, or maybe it's because he's looking down or away and then the lips they're pretty similar so yeah i can see it so that's nipsey and then we have you know what you know what do you know what gotta go through all this and then you have me so what do y'all think like do you think i'm a reincarnation or what do you think I'm finding it scary that somebody just out of nowhere did this, but it is what it is. I mean, it's been a lot going on, and that's why I'm doing this video. So, it's like I said, this video doesn't have a specific topic. You can call it a rant. I just want to discuss everything that's been happening with you guys. So, we covered reincarnation, okay? So, that was number one. We covered that. All right. So, now, let's cover... What's been going on with my health? Um, I've been having a lot of pain. Like intense pain. Pain that my pain medication, and I'm on the 15 milligram oxycodone, wasn't helping. And that's not normal for me. Okay? That's not normal. Like I, a couple years ago, maybe 2015, is the last time I went through, you know, the constant ER visits. So, I went to the ER on April 7th, April 8th, April 10th, April the 12th, and April 15th, which is today. Okay? And I understand that that is a lot of visits. I get it. I got it. You know what I'm saying? I know. It's very hurtful that I was flagged as a drug seeker. On the visit for um, April 9th, a doctor who's had it out for me for a while, like, walked in the room. I filed several complaints, several griev griev grievances on this doctor to keep him away from me because he was trying to give me morphine, which I'm allergic to, or fentanyl, which I'm absolutely not taking. Let me say that one more time. I am absolutely not taking fentanyl. Okay? Not at all. Why would you give people that in the hospitals and y'all are saying that, like, it's this type of street drug that's making people go bananas? Okay, so why are you trying to give that to me? I have sickle cell disease. Usually, I just get dilated. Okay? That's what I've been getting since, mm, I want to say, like, 21? That's when, when my crisis started to get more frequent, around 21. Um... I'm 30 now, so I'm, I'm shocked I'm still even on this earth after all I've been through, but um, I just told him, like, I was not taking that, and he came into the room, because I was there that Sunday, and which was the 7th, and the doctor, I think I'm getting my dates mixed up a bit, but I know I was there on the 7th, 
Um, and that doctor, he gave me like four rounds of dilated Benadryl, Phenergan, you know, fluids to get the pain under control. He did the right thing. The doctor on the 7th did the right thing. Okay. The doctor, matter of fact, I take it back. I did not go to the, to the ER on the 8th. It was the 9th. Okay. I went back on the 9th because they said, well, if your pain or your symptoms worsen to come back. And I tried to tell the doctor on the seventh, like, listen, they all y'all always tell me to come back, and then when I come back, I get mistreated because they see how much medicine that I received and they look at me as if I'm a drug seeker. And he's like, No, 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 that won't happen. You know, trying to reassure me that that won't happen. But I'm like, this man don't even know how these people really are in his own hospital in his own like his colleagues he don't know how they really are when it comes to sickle cell they're very disrespectful they're very rude they don't want to check anything okay so april 7th everything went fine he said come back if things get worse for you you know you can come back so i came back on april 9th um pain was worse like limping type of thing i have to try to listen to music to keep me from screaming because if you've ever seen anybody in a sickle cell crisis we can scream at the top of our lungs and be in so much pain just screaming and screaming and screaming and i've learned to try to not do that and like listen to some music or something to try to distract myself so when i'm in a lot of pain i'll start to rock back and forth i'll rock and i'll keep rocking that's how, like, I'm trying to keep from screaming. Or I have to put my head down or, you know, certain little different things to try to not do that. Because it's low-key embarrassing when you're going to an ER and everybody's looking at you and you're screaming at the top of your lungs in pain. They don't know what's going on with you. So they're assuming you're a nut. And no, we're not nuts. It hurts. It really does hurt. I wouldn't wish this disease and the pain that comes with it, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy, okay? So, the doctor, um, on the 9th, he came into the room, and this is the doctor that got me flagged. He wrote into my file that I was a drug seeker, and for other doctors to not give me any IV medication, and so on and so forth, okay? So, and his own colleague told me about that note that is in my file. So I was already aware. I was already irritated. But since I had already put in another complaint, I'm thinking, okay, he gets it. He'll stay away from me. No. He comes walks and all up in the room and everything. Hi, Miss Owens. Uh, how you feeling? And you know, I'm like, okay, maybe if he came in here, they done discuss things with him and everything will be fine. So as we and he has two girls in there with him he had an observer observer and a medical scribe which is the person that's typing on a computer as the doctor talks um and i don't know why the observer was there i guess she was there to do what it said observe get it all right so we get to the point where we're discussing the plan and he's like well you already know i'm not going to give you any iv medicine unless it's morphine or fentanyl and i said why would you try to give me something I'm allergic to? And why would you try to give me something else that you claim, you guys claim has such an addiction rate and people on the streets are losing their minds trying to get it, to get high? I don't want that. I'm not taking that. So he's like, well, I'm going to put it in the computer anyway. And I said, you know what? No, you're not. What you're not going to do is sit here and put something in my file or in my records that I just told you I cannot and will not take. You are not going to do that. So by this point, we're going back and forth. Or it isn't even any back and forth because so much authority came out of my voice. He couldn't say anything to me. I don't know where that authority came from. That's when I started ex experiencing the um, reincarnation. That's when I started experiencing her because she came out. Even my mother said, that was not your voice. Like they were looking at me. But that was not my voice coming out of me talking. My mom even said it didn't sound like me. I have a high-pitched little voice, as you can tell. But, um, so, basically, 
I don't even remember much of what I said other than about him not um, putting that in the system and trying to make it like I'm not like I'm refusing it when I just told him that I cannot take that. And um, the last thing I remember is saying, God bless you. And I think he was like, thank you for your time. And I said, no, thank you for your time. Get out like that. That's all I remember. I don't even remember um, the the in between of things. I don't remember that. So that's how I could tell maybe that was her coming out and saying whatever she needed to say through me. I believe in the spirit realm just as much as the physical. So this video is going to be long. I'm not going to lie to you if it's long because I need to talk to you guys. It's been so much. It's just been so much going on. And I just, I need to vent. Okay? So this is what this is about. Venting. Um, I went to a different location, same hospital, different location on that Wednesday, the 10th. They did everything correct, gave me all the medications that I needed to get. They did everything right, got me feeling better. I went home. Um, the weather has been very crazy, and as we know, the weather can trigger sickle cell, and I've been very, like, under a lot of stress lately, so... Those are the two triggers that have been triggering my disease. Um, I went on the 12th back to that location because the pain had gotten bad. And I'm like, it, it, it just kept getting worse and worse, guys. And I'm like, I go there. It's like 7 o'clock in the morning. I checked in at 7.14. Um, they did my vitals by 7.23. By 7.30, I was in the triage. By 7.32, I was in a room, okay? And I didn't like it because they had me in a room that had like 15 more patients in there aside from me. And I didn't like that because I have sickle cell. I'm very, um, I can get sick from being just around the wrong thing. But I had a mask over my face because my tooth um, got drilled off by the dentist. So that's why I haven't been doing any on-camera videos i do have my ring light and everything so we will get that popping once i get my tooth fixed but until then i'm very self-conscious about my tooth and it being practically missing in the front at that um so that's why i haven't been doing any any videos that are um like me facing the camera or in front of the camera that's why so that's why we're just doing this right now but i'm telling you this channel is going to use a lot of different methods a lot of different ways to talk sometimes i'm gonna i'm gonna do this sometimes i'm gonna be in front of the camera so that's how this is gonna work um back to the story i went friday april 12th okay and they gave me a cup of water and three pain pills that added up to 15 because that's what I take, 15s. But since they don't have those 15s at the hospital, they have to give me three fives, okay, to make 15. So they gave me a three fives and a cup of water. And the next thing I know, the doctor comes in there talking about chronic pain. And, you know, well, we only handle acute situations and it seems like what is going on with you is chronic pain. I say to him that I have never been diagnosed with chronic pain and that this is not chronic pain because I know my body and I know my sickle cell. And when it's starting to, you know, get bad, I know those, those, um, things like I've been dealing with this for 30 years. I know my body. Okay. And this is not chronic pain at all i wouldn't be coming to the hospital for chronic pain because if it was chronic pain a 15 milligram oxycodone would have knocked that right on out it wouldn't have been throbbing and been so evasive and pain it wouldn't have been that painful okay and to those who if you watch this video and you have chronic pain you let me know what your daily routine is to deal with your chronic pain how you got diagnosed with that and everything because i don't know much about it i apologize um so if you, if anyone watches this video and you have chronic pain i would love to hear your story i would love to hear it please please tell me about it um so within 30 minutes they had me discharged no one checked my blood i mean i'm like whoa for me to have sickle cell and be out of a hospital within 30 minutes 
That's crazy. That is really crazy because you can miss one thing with a person that has sickle cell and will be dead if you just miss that one little thing. Um, my blood hasn't been checked since April the 7th. That's a long time, okay? So from April the 7th to April the 12th, any visit that I had going to that hospital, they never checked my blood. Even today, they didn't check my blood. They just gave me, and I'm happy that today went well because Friday didn't go so well. You know what I'm saying? I didn't come to the hospital to get some pills. I came because I don't understand why my body is flaring up so bad. And I thought when you needed to know something, and if something is urgent, that you go to the emergency room. That is how they train us with sickle cell from a young child. They tell us if your pain medicine, if your home medications, your home pain pills are not working, go to the emergency room. You're, you're in a crisis, okay? I don't really know of many people who can handle and deal with a crisis at home. Um, like, I'm waiting on my medications to kick in now so that I took my pain pills. So that's why I'm just doing this video because I just want to keep you guys in the loop of what's going on. Um, so today they did everything correctly. He gave me three rounds of the Benadryl, the Finnegan, the Dilaudid, the IV fluids. The only thing they didn't do is check my blood. And I feel like if you want to know what's going on with me, you should check my blood. Like, why would you not check it? Because sickle cell is very black and white to me. Um, either you check the blood and you can see that I'm sickling or... Or you don't check the blood. And then when I keep popping up, you're going to sit there and try to flag me as a drug seeker. But it's your it's your job to check my blood to see if I'm sickling. The doctor today said, yeah, you seem, yeah, you seem to be sickling. Like, because if he's like, you know your body. Because now my crisis is not only in my legs and arms, but oh my gosh, it's in my back. It hurts. It hurts. I just can't. I can't. I can't, bro. Like, this is too much pain. This is crazy to me. Um, I'm thinking about just doing a lawsuit because I've been going through this for 11 years with being mistreated in hospitals. Um, and I just can't take it anymore because this is to the point where you could kill me. And if I don't stand up to these people, how many more people are going to go through this? How many people before God said, I'm using you, Kiara, I'm going to use you to bring this out. How many people already died? How many people walked in that hospital and they didn't walk out? God is sitting here telling me to let you guys know the hospitals are no longer here to heal. They're here to kill. And you need to be very careful and tread lightly, just like me, because you just don't know. Like, my heart rate on Friday was 142. And even though they saw that it was 142, they still sent me home. That is a sign of pain, okay? That right there should have showed them this girl is not faking her pain. Just because I look calm to you, to me, I didn't feel, feel like I looked calm at all. But to them, oh, you don't look like you're in pain. What does pain look like? What does it look like? Does it have a certain feature? Because I don't think so. I don't think that's how that works. But how many people have been been lost to, because of this? Like, and how many more are we going to lose? We're going to lose a lot more people. And I'm telling you this right now, within the next year, be prepared to hear about more deaths in hospitals. Watch your family members. Watch yourself, okay? If you don't have to go to those places, please don't go. Please. Like, I'm begging you. And if you see mistreatment happening to another patient, please say something. Like, don't just sit there and think, oh, it's not me. It's not my business. It is our business because we're all in this together. No matter what, the, what your skin color is, we all bleed red, okay? We all come in this world the same. We all leave this world the same. I am tired, y'all. I'm so tired. I'm tired. And I'm trying so hard. Like, I don't want to cry. But I'm just, I don't know. Like, I'm tired of fighting. Like, I know my body. And I know this isn't normal for me. 
and I'm not being listened to at all. And they're just sitting here, oh, she just want drugs. And no, it's nothing like that. I am really in a lot of pain. And if you would just listen and check my blood, you would see that. But they're not even checking my blood. Like they're going off of a blood a blood level that they did on April 7th. We're at April 15th. And if I've been in that ER that much, you should have checked my blood to at least reassure things. Like they're not even doing that. And then the fact that I got to sit here and be flagged, labeled a drug seeker, like I, I can't do it anymore. I can't. I didn't ask for this disease. I didn't volunteer for it. But I'm not going to back down. Period. Period. I can't sit and watch this anymore. That Friday, even though I knew I was in a lot of pain, I went to medical records and I got a CD with all of my files on it, all of the notes they've put in my file, because I, I'm, I wanted, I'm doing a lawsuit. And if I don't make it through this lawsuit, then y'all know what happened to me. You know. And you better tell what I'm telling you now, that they took me out, okay? Because they didn't want the truth to come out. I don't know why I'm picked for this certain this certain um mission or, or I don't know. I don't wanna be, but I can't run from it anymore. I've known since a kid that it is something special within me. It's there. I've always known that. I just didn't know what it was. And now that I'm meeting people and, and they're telling me that I'm part of the hundred and forty four thousand, that I'm reincarnated, that's a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. And I don't think people realize it. Don't just say it to just so you can sound cool. It's a lot of responsibility within being a part of that 144,000. And I'm grateful. If I really am a part of that, I'm grateful. Very grateful. But this is just, I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of not being able to go in the hospital and know I'm going to be able to get the right treatment that they're gonna do what they need to do i'm tired of i had to put the fear to the side i was really scared this morning to go to the hospital but since 10 o'clock last night once that pain hit my back it was over for me like i was using a heating pad like putting it on different parts of my body because every part of my body hurt and it just i just oh my god i don't know i don't know but all I do know is if you support me and, and you support this channel, you don't have to support it financially. I'm saying emotionally, mentally support me. That's what I'm saying. And if you want to support me financially, then my cash app is in in my um, description. It's in the description if you want to do that. But that is not what this is about. It's a lot of YouTubers out here always asking for donation after donation to do something that they chose to do. Nobody made you do this. So why are you trying to make your subscribers pay just to hear what you have to say? That's not right. That's something that if they feel led to donate to you, they should. It shouldn't be, hey, donate to this channel or, or I'm not going to do a video. Like, who does that? Who does that? I'm not even, I don't even understand why I'm not even being paid for my YouTube videos at this point. Because my channel has created a lot of traffic. So I don't know. But I'm just tired, y'all. Like, I have been going through this for 11 years with being mistreated in these hospitals, being flagged, being labeled. And I just cannot take anymore. So it is definitely time to sue. Because it should not ever come to a point where somebody has sickle cell disease and they walk in the hospital and they're given three pain pills and a cup of water and sent back home. Do you think I don't have pills at home to take? I do. Why would I come to your hospital or to your facility for pills? Why would I do that? If my pills were working for that pain, I wouldn't be there, correct? So why is that what they automatically think about sickle cell? Do they think that about cancer? No. No, they'll sit right there and, and, and cancer patients be on some serious, serious, serious narcotics. They don't never not once question a cancer patient about their pain. But did you know that sickle cell and cancer pain is the same pain? Did you know that? It is.
it's the same identical type of pain. So I don't understand, like, is it because this disease is something that majority of minority people get, like blacks, Latinos, like you, right, you don't really see white people with sickle cell. I've only known one white person um, with sickle cell and God rest his soul, it gave him so much medicine, he OD'd in the hospital, in the emergency room. Um, and he used to just tell me how he'd go into the ER and he'd get four milligrams of Dilaudid. And I'm like, what? They only give me 0.5. Like, really, I'm supposed to get two milligrams of Dilaudid. And they would just give me, like, 0.5 or one. And then when it's not working, be like, oh, we just gave you a lot of it. It should have worked. No, it shouldn't have because you gave me the wrong dosage. But since he was white... And he had sickle cell or whatever. They they literally used to just roll the carpet of medication out for him. And I'm not trying to make this a race thing, but let's, let's be clear. I'm telling you what I know. I'm not assuming. I'm telling you what I know. Okay? I will not ever get on this channel and bring anything to you that is false. All facts. Okay? This is all facts. So, um... Like I said, I'm planning to see a lawyer because I'm tired of this. Like, this has to be illegal in some form. This has to be illegal. I don't take prescriptions from anyone but my doctor, my hematologist. And then every time I get admitted into the hospital, the last time I was put in the hospital was uh, March the 25th until March 31st. So... I mean, it just does not even make any sense. I was admitted that whole time, and they did not once call my hematologist and tell him, hey, your patient is in the hospital. You might want to come over and do a consult for her. I suffered that entire visit, guys. They gave me 0.5 of Dilaudid every four hours with a 15 milligram pill every four hours. And then after that, they gave me a PCA pump for 13 hours the next day excuse me after the next after the next two days that i was there on the 27th they started the pca pump and um i was getting 0.2 a continuous dose of 0.2 and then another 0.2 every 10 minutes if i needed to press the button it was not helping me at all and i still had that 15 milligram oxycodone available so I made sure, and I always make sure when I'm in the hospital, that I still take my pills. I've never been the one to sit there and just rely on IV medication. So that's why I don't understand why they're trying to target me. I don't come into the hospital unless I absolutely have to. I will not ever go to the ER if I know my pain is something I can handle at home. Okay? I, I would never. Because I wouldn't be selfish to take up a room and it's possibly someone else that needs that room more than me. That's just the type of person I am. That's how I think. But that omission was horrible. I suffered. I didn't get any pain relief that entire time. I didn't get any pain relief. So I was sent home or whatever. Still sent home in pain. And that was basically why... Starting April the 7th, I was going back so much. April 7th, April 9th, April 10th, April 12th, April 15th. That's five visits. And that's a lot of visits. And that's too many visits for me to have not been taken seriously. Okay? So, I don't even want to sue these people. I really don't. But my human rights have been violated. This has caused me to miss school. This has caused me to miss modeling opportunities it's caused me to not be able to do what i need to do to live and make sure my income is straight like right now i need money like for my bills and how am i going to do that when i'm constantly having to go to the hospital and my mother she had to miss work for like almost six days taking me to the hospital and now we got to figure out what we're going to do or whatever to get everything back right because this is what goes on. They don't take me serious. When they did this two years ago, not taking me serious when I was in a crisis, I was found in a coma two days later. I was in a five-day coma from that. Like, wouldn't that scare you enough that if your pain 
it's getting to a point where you can't manage it, that you would go to the ER. But this all goes back to God saying, you need to tell my people hospitals are not here to heal. They're here to kill. Go look. You can look it up on YouTube how many people done walked in the hospital and they ain't walk out. You can look it up. This stuff is facts. These are facts. And it's going to be many more bodies dropping because of this. People are no longer in the medical industry for compassion and things. But they're not in there for that. They're there for a check. So the compassion part of it, that left a long time ago. The last time I saw compassion, like true compassion within every doctor, within every nurse, was in 2009. And I've never seen it again after that. Like, I wore my cross today. I wore my crucifix on my wrist. I wore my cross jewelry on my neck. Because I felt like, God, please, 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 please lead me to a doctor who is going to do things the right way. I cannot take being given pills again and sitting, sent back home when I know that I've taken my medication correctly at home. So why would I come to the hospital? If pills didn't work at my home, why would it work in the hospital? And you know what you're supposed to do with sickle cell. The protocol is IV fluids, IV pain medicine, and oxygen. I don't even get oxygen anymore. They don't even do that. And all of this is supposed to be something that is required. And they don't even do that. They'll, they'll give And sometimes you got doctors who don't even want to give you fluids. Just pain medicine. Trust and believe me, I am not a drug addict. Trust and believe me, I am not a drug seeker. All I want to do is be better so I can succeed in life and accomplish my goals. I wanted to be married by now. I wanted to have three kids by now. I wanted to be in a condo on South Beach living happily. I didn't see this in my plans. But you know what? They always say if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. So... That's when I realized this is bigger than me. And I got to let it, you know, let go. Let go and let God. I have to, I've had to learn that. And I'm still learning it. That I'm not in control, okay? A lot of us do this where we just try to control things knowing that we are not in control, okay? We are not. We're not in control of anything. They make us think that. But we're not. And God is is everything to me because I feel like that's the only reason I'm still here is my faith it's no medication no pain medication or anything like that that is keeping me on this earth that's God when, how, when did you know somebody that come out of a stroke coma seizures stuff like that normally people don't and especially after a five-day coma you usually come back in a vegetative state and I made a full recovery once that happened to me, that's when I started seeing the angel numbers all the time. Every single day. Like today, I saw 444, um, 222, and I write them down on a calendar. Each one that I see for each day, I write them down. Yesterday, I saw 444, 777, 333, 222, 111, and 1111. And that was all just yesterday. But today, I only saw, like I said, 222-444 and um, 333. I write them down so I can keep up with them. I need to write the meanings down again so that I can keep up with that because I want to study it more. But if you know anything about angel numbers, if you know anything about the 144,000 and reincarnation and how all of that ties together, please leave that in the comments because I'm very interested to know. Like I'm doing my research, but I'm sure it's more people out here who know more than I do. Let me see how far we are with this video. We're already at 39 minutes. See what I'm saying? Long video. Time goes by fast. All right. So that's everything that I wanted to really vent about. I'm probably going to title this video that hospitals are here to kill and not heal. Um, and y'all just pray for me that I just overcome this and that the pain medication I took about two hours ago helps with the pain to get it down to a 
reasonable level because right now I'm about at a nine um and in order to function I need it to be about a four I'm never completely pain free but I'm thankful when it is a four if it ever gets to a four I'm very thankful I count my blessings um I just want to be great and I feel like with this disease it's holding me back and I'm not being able to reach my full potential and that's making me upset making me very upset I literally have four classes left until I graduate with my health information technology degree and I'm sitting here in pain and not able to attend school fully right now I'm also having a hip replacement April 30th so if you would like to donate to my channel please do because right now I cannot work I cannot like with this hip thing I had to stop everything like I had to put in a um some type of slip they had me to put in for school that I was stopping for medical purposes and usually school is my second income so right now I don't have that income and I'm not scared to sit here and say that I don't I don't have that income right now um so if you like I said if you want to do something or send something my cash app is in the description box it's gorgeously real on cash app and I have PayPal which is Owens dot Kiera twenty two at yahoo dot com, but I will put all of that into the description. I don't know, y'all. I just hope I'm hoping things just get better. Please pray that this lawsuit goes through because I deserve it. From everything that I've been through, I deserve it. I really deserve it. My family deserves it. Um, my little sister's birthday is next Sunday. So, if y'all send anything to my channel for donations, part of those donations will be going to her for her birthday. Um, she's going to be 16 years old. So, very excited for her. Very excited to see where she's going in life and the things she's doing. And I know she's just going to do something that is going to, it's going to advance sickle cell and it's going to cause people to have compassion again i'm not backing down this fight is not over trust me i have my moments but it was very nice to just be able to vent on this video um it that's all i really wanted to do because god kept telling me even when i was asleep he's like you still haven't done what i asked you to do i asked you to let my people know that hospitals are here to kill they are not here to heal and um, I also learned about the how some of the hospital signs are supposedly connected to the Baphomet. I don't know. Like, this is stuff that I'm being told. And some of it I've had time to go through and look at. Majority of it, no, because I've been in a lot of pain. When I'm in a lot of pain, I don't want to be bothered. I just want to lay down when I'm in a lot of pain. So I'm going to end this video. Um, I might be back. So, don't trip. I'll be back tomorrow with some real topics. Um, I still, to my two subscribers that wanted me to do the specific videos, I apologize that I have not released those videos. I've just been going through a lot with my health. And I've been in a lot of excruciating pain lately. Um, and I'm going to try to give you guys a lot of videos before I have my hip replacement on a 30th. Because... After that, um, I'm probably not going to want to be on here much because I got to go to rehab and, you know, um, hip replacement, recovery. Recovering from that is very painful. Um, if I can, what I will do is try to get a vlog going and vlog that entire um, experience from my phone. I'm still using my phone. I don't have a camera yet, but... I have a friend that bought me the ring light that goes with the cell phone. So maybe I'll get my mom to record me coming out of surgery. And then we'll just try to record the recovery process and my journey to becoming normal again. As far as my hip and being able to walk. Because right now I can't do much walking. I'm, I'm in a wheelchair. Um, My hip is completely collapsed. 
it's collapsed fully so that's why I can't too much walk if I do walk I limp really really bad um thank you for listening to this video thank you for letting me vent um please be respectful on this channel on this video especially because I just wanted to tell you what God told me to tell you and I'm gonna say it again hospitals are here to kill not heal so be careful um with the medical industry be careful what you take you know why know what you're doing to your body don't sit there and let just because somebody is a doctor don't sit there and take their word for everything their word is not bond like research anything that gives you to take for your illness or for anything research it look at the side effects see if the side effects are, are worth the worth even taking a pill because sometimes they'll give you medication where the side effects are worse than what you're taking the pill for to get rid of so just be very mindful guys be very mindful and it's time for us to get together and to choose a side Either you're going to be for God or you're going to be for Satan. Either you're going to be for good or you're going to be for evil. Either you're going to be positive or you're going to be negative. You can't be in between. Okay? And I'm going to tell you what side I'm on. I am completely on God's side. And I'm not scared to die for that. Okay? And you shouldn't be either. So, this is your girl. Gorgeous. This is your girl, Gorgeously Real, and you just watch Gorgeously Real TV. I will not be doing an intro for this because this video is too long for an intro um, as far as the intro that I made. All right, so love you guys. Like I said, I'm going to leave my cash app and my PayPal in the description, and you leave your comments below. Like this video as well and share it if you feel led to donate if you feel led to because like i said i can't work right now so i've lost a lot of money in the process of having to stop school and turn down two jobs um because of my hip but like i said if you feel led to donate donate it's up to you so i'm glad that i got to talk to you guys and give you an update thank you for tuning into this video and i hope you enjoy the rest of your day goodbye